नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन 55 ऑफ द कोर्स ऑन वर्क सिस्टम डिजाइन एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कंक्लूड आवर डिस्कशन ऑन द इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ अर्गोनॉमिक्स फ्रेंड्स इन द लास्ट वीक वी विल ट्राई टू सी सम एप्लीकेशंस ऑफ द वर्क स्टडी और द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ वर्क स्टडी वेयर वी विल ट्राई टू सी दैट वट और वट आर द प्रिंसिपल्स और वट कैन बी द गाइडिंग lines or with what can be the guiding principles for developing or designing a good work system so we may take an example of a chair which each one of us are using how the chair can be designed to ensure the comfort of the worker there can be a person who is operating a train or a person who is driving or who is a pilot for a aircraft what can be the guiding principles guiding theory behind the development of the work system or the place where he or she is working so we can see that at each and every work sphere or work area there is always a scope for improvement for example if we see the constraint of space especially in case of an aero aeroplane or a aircraft the cabin crew when they are serving the customers when they provide maybe the refreshments and food you can see the trolley that they are carrying the trolley has to ensure that it moves in the aisle only the plates are kept in a specific way only the other things other food or beverages that they have to place in the tray are placed in a very very methodological and systematic manner so there also there is a worker who is a cabin crew member and there is a system that is the trolley that they are operating and then how the operator or the cabin crew member takes out a tray places the other additional things maybe a water bottle and hands it over to the passenger that is also work being done so we will try in the last week of our course to try to see certain applications certain case studies in which the work system has been improved or some guidelines of what we have already studied have been used to actually put them into practice but today we are just going to carry our discussion forward in the topic of man machine system so in man machine system if you remember in the previous session we have understood that what is a man machine system what are the different types of man machine system how a person or a man or a operator can be used as a productive element and what are the advantages similarly we have also tried to understand that if a machine is being used as a productive element what are the advantages finally we have seen a man machine system that uh, there is a uh, information processing information decision making based on the information and then this information is useful for the operator to make certain decisions now what is the information the information can be in the form of certain displays a person is working in an organization and the suppose the temperature has to be maintained at 24 degree centigrade and he sees that the temperature is already 29 degree centigrade so how which button he must press how he he must actuate the system in such a way that the temperature comes down from 29 to well within the prescribed limit of 24 degree centigrade so that is basically the use of the information now how the person is able to see or feel that it is 29 degree because there is a standard display which may be a digital display through which the person will be or the operator will be able to see that the temperature is higher so therefore he will use a control mechanism he may use a switch through which he can control the temperature and bring it down below the critical value so that is basically is what we are going to study today that is the controls the displays and then we will try to see that how the environment affects the performance of the man machine system because if you remember in the previous session we have seen that there is a man there is a machine or a equipment or a physical object so they interact there is a interface between the two and then the environment also affects that how they interact among 
each other so there are two important things the interface or the interaction between the man and the system or man and the machine sorry or the equipment and the additional environmental factors that affect this interaction so that we will try to understand today so today whatever we are going to discuss much is related to information sharing only so there is not nothing much that i feel that needs lot of explanation so i will read through the slides and wherever necessary i will try to explain because you will yourself be able to understand or may be able to appreciate that there is lot of similar information available so there is breadth and depth of information available related to this area there are codes standards guidelines which have to be followed by industries in over to and in order to ensure the comfortable working conditions for the workers so we are not going to get into the nitty gritties of the acts or the guidelines but we are going to understand that yes it is important to provide a good working environment to the worker so that he is able to act productively for our organization he is able to produce whatever has been told to him or her in order to meet the overall objective of the organization that is to be productive efficient effective as well as profitable so let us quickly start today's presentation because we have a lot many slides today and we will have to rush through and, and try to understand try to assimilate whatever possible during the session and maybe later on you can refer to the transparencies or the slides and have a better understanding of each and every aspect so let us now quickly see that what are the various aspects of a man machine system first one is the design of the information display so there are different types of displays that we will try to understand today one of the examples is the digital watch that we are using in this studio so that is one example of display just i will write it for your reference the digital clock can be one example of a display then design of controls now the design of controls can be suppose i have to shift the slide to the next slide there is a button here if i press this button automatically the slide will be shifted so there is a control available with me through which i can shift the slide manually there is a pointer also which is available through which i can shift the slide so slide changer is available on the uh, screen also there is a option to change the slide that is basically the control that is available with me and the last is the layout of the working space or working environment or environmental factor so this is a third part of the system so we have a man we have a machine and then there is a environmental uh, factor which influence the performance of this man machine interaction so we will go one by one first we will see the types of displays then the controls and then finally the environmental factors so let us see now first the man machine system the aspect one is design of information displays let us see now so here we can have a example of a display design that how we must design our displays so displays are necessary extension to man's senses and provide both prime and supplemental information needed by operators in making decisions and in effecting control responses one example already i have given today that is the temperature has gone beyond a particular temperature level or beyond a particular value so that is basically will be sensed it will be sensed through a sensor and there will be a display so in the display we will be able to see that yes the temperature is beyond the critical value so that is the first stage the second stage is now we have to rectify we have to modify we have to bring back the temperature to the to the desired value less than the critical value so what we will do we will exercise a control we will press a button or we will change a lever based on that it will be the system will be actuated and the temperature will be brought back below the critical value so displays are necessary extension to man's senses now this can be one thing that we can understand the man may also be feeling that the temperature is more it is not beyond below the critical value but he may not be knowing that how much is the change 
if the 24 is the critical value he may feel little uncomfortable he may not be knowing whether it is 26 or it is 27 or it is 25 so the displays are necessary extension to man's senses so if he is able to look at the display and find out what is the exact temperature so this is the additional we can say information which is available to the worker and this is both will provide us a uh, prime information or a supplemental information needed by operators so this is first first is gathering the information then this information is used in making decisions and in effecting the control responses information presented by the displays can be considered dynamic or static many times if you see a display outside a uh, news company or outside a newspaper publishing company the office of a newspaper publishing company there is a random there is not a random but there is a continuous display so the news flash is changing maybe after every half an hour or sometimes it may so happen if there is a breaking news they may stop the normal display of the news and they may only play the breaking news only so that is also a display that we can make use of just an example of a dynamic display or it can be a static display if it if it is a it it can be a board which is is uh, giving us some motivational uh, information or it is just giving a motivational quote that is put inside the shop floor so it is not changing it is static so the information presented by the displays can be considered dynamic or static dynamic information continuously changes or is subject to change through time for example traffic signals keep on changing you may have a green signal then maybe it may be changing to orange and then to red or the charts or the graph can be examples of static information or static displays now classification of information the information can be of different type first is the display so displays can be static or it can be dynamic similarly information can be quantitative or it can be qualitative now quantitative information display presentation that reflect the approximate value of some variable such as temperature or speed so as i have already taken an example so you may have a display of 24 degree centigrade or it can be 29 degree centigrade so this is all quantitative information that we are using then the speed can be given in kilometer per hour some value can be there so quantitative qualitative information display presentation that reflect the approximate value trend rate of change or direction of change so sometime qualitative can be some parameter suppose q it is increasing or it can be some parameter p which is in the red zone so here we are not getting the exact value but we are getting a trend so p is a parameter if it is in the red zone it means it is beyond the critical value so in qualitative we may not be getting the exact values but in case of quantitative we will get exact values for the variables then there can be status information sometimes maybe it, it one example can be the information for the trains the status can be given whether it is right time or it is late or delayed by how much time representational information can be there identification information can be there for example suppose in our passport all our identification information is there time phased information is there so we can have different types of information also which can be displayed and on if and in our case our focus will be the information that can be displayed on the shop floor now we can see different types of displays are there so what basically we are trying to understand we are trying to understand that yes the displays are important because whatever information is projected on the display we take that information we process that information we do some decision making based on that information and then we actuate the control mechanism to bring the things into order if the things are not in order but if the things are in order we will just note down the information and that will be used for our record that for this much period of time there was no problem system was functioning as per desired or as system was functioning as per requirement as desired so different now we were trying to understand what are the different types of displays now let us try to see we can have visual displays and we can have auditory 
displays. Now, within visual displays, we can have quantitative, we can have qualitative displays, we can have check displays. So, three types of displays are there quantitative, qualitative, and check displays. Now, let us see what are these. Now, quantitative displays can be fixed scale with moving parts. For example, pressure gauge will give us a value. Moving scale with fixed pointer may be the weighing machine. So, the pointer is fixed, the scale is moving and wherever it stops you get the value. Digital display for example, in case of a tape recorder. Now, display is used to read an approximate value or to indicate rate of change in the direction. For example, the increase or decrease in pressure as I have shown in the previous slide. Display gives the information about the parameters whether they are normal. I have already taken an example that when the value goes beyond a particular value or the particular critical value, we need to start our controlling mechanism. We need to actuate our controller so that we are able to bring the value which has gone beyond the critical value well within the range which is specified for the operation of that machine or equipment. So, we can have this is giving us examples of different types of displays. We can have fixed scale with moving part, moving scale with fixed pointer, digital display can be there. So, display basically why display is required it is given here already we have covered this thing the display is used to read an approximate value or to indicate the rate of change or the change in direction so let us now see majorly quantitative displays are there qualitative displays are there and check displays are there one important thing are the auditory displays now what are audit uh, auditory displays as compared to visual display it can be make monitoring performance superior it so it can make monitoring per, uh, performance superior so these devices are suitable as warning devices so warning signals at a very high amplitude or at a very loud voice or the, those can be uh, you can say classified as the auditory display so displays can be quantitative qualitative check displays and the auditory displays and this is the information below this is giving the various you can say characteristics of the displays and even the types the fixed scale with moving parts and the moving scale with fixed pointer. So, we will try to see this with the help of a diagram. So, here we can see fixed scale moving pointer. So, the pointer will move in this case. So, this is the pointer and this is the scale which is fixed. So, the pointer will move as per the value or as per the uh, reading that that has to be shown on the pointer. So, here also this is fixed scale moving pointer. So, the scale is fixed, but the pointer will keep on moving and here this is the opposite of that. This is scale is fixed, pointer is moving, pointer is moving. In this case, moving scale fixed pointer. So, your pointer is fixed at one point only and the scale will move. So, here your scale is movable. So, you can have different types of display and if you see you can just try to figure out these type of applications or the uh, examples for these types of displays. More, more or less if you go for a weighing scale, usually people have kept the weighing scale at their houses also for weighing the weight of a person. So, in that case I think the pointer is fixed at one point that is what I believe and the scale moves. So, that is a good example pointer is fixed the scale is moving the scale will stop where the actual weight is for example, it is 75 kgs for a person. So, the scale will move from 0 and it will stop at 75, but the pointer remains fixed. Whereas, when you are driving a motorbike your scale is fixed the point uh, in the previous case I have told pointer is fixed and the scale is moving, but if you are driving a motorbike your scale is fixed, but the pointer is moving you may be driving at 20 then you may be 40 and 60 scale is at one place the pointer is moving. So, the fixed scale moving pointer and the weighing scale example that I have taken moving scale fixed pointer. Now, what are the considerations if we have understood the types of information, the types of displays. Now, let us see the consideration in display design. We need to consider what is the information to be transmitted, what is its purpose of function, purpose or or we can say purpose or function, 
what type of display is to be used uh, we have seen types of displays in the previous slide so we have to take a decision or consider what type of uh, display types of sorry types of displays that we have already covered nature of visual environment in which the information is to be transmitted detailed design characteristics of the type of display chosen so if we choose for example that the pointer will be fixed and the scale will be moving then we need to understand calibrate uh, and calculate all the design related characteristics for this type of display so in when we are designing a display we have to take into account all these three four parameters so that the worker feels comfortable in using the display and is able to derive the desired information looking at the display then he can process this information and use it for decision making finally may be leading to the control mechanism if the things go out of control now this is the second part that is design of control so first part is the display there is a you can say depending upon the requirement there will be a display which will give us the information or share the information with us regarding the state of the system once we have seen the display we will need to do some action we need to uh, change the state of system we need to perform some actual uh, we need to perform some remedial measures we need to control actually so when we need to control we need to have the control or the design of the controls or the controlling mechanism so now let us see what is uh, related to the controls now what is a control a control is a device which can transmit information to some machine mechanism or a system so it is a able to transmit information to a machine mechanism or a system so basically a control can be we can say a control lever for changing the gear or suppose we are turning a job or a axisymmetric job or a circular cross sectional job on a lathe machine now we see that the tool has traversed the desired length we will like to withdraw the tool so in that case we have seen the display we have seen we have observed what has happened now we need to act so what we will do we will stop the machine that is one control mechanism and then we will try to withdraw or retract the tool or the cross slide so that the tool comes back and then we will try to move it back to the place from where to the position from where the turning operation has to start again all over again by giving additional depth of cut so this what we are doing we are using the different levers we are controlling manipulating the state of our machine so the control basically is a device which can transmit information to some machine mechanism or a system thus a control is selected based upon the nature of information information desired to be transmitted the performance efficiency of a human operator is affected by the nature and type of controls provided with any machine very very important the performance efficiency now suppose the it is very very difficult to control or the control lever is difficult to handle or difficult to reach so the it means that we have not devised a good control mechanism for the operator who has to actuate a particular machine or a particular equipment with the help of a control lever so if it is not designed properly the efficiency will certainly be poor therefore the performance efficiency of a human operator is affected by the nature and type of controls provided with any machine so if the machine is easy to control the worker feels comfortable we you can yourself imagine that if we are driving a car now the operator or the driver is a person who is operating a machine the machine is a car so if the controls are easily accessible he need not reach to the controls at the other thing can be he is able to manipulate the controls while driving comfortably he will feel less tired he will be able to drive for more uh, distance he will be able to maybe enjoy the ride because there is no mental strain on him that he has to change the song so he has to look for uh, look ahead also that somebody is coming or not look in the rear view mirror also then he has to change the control so maybe he has to lean towards the control for the Uh, audio system so if he is not if he need not do that he can control it directly from the uh, steering only he will feel much more 
comfortable while doing that. So, basically the controls have to be designed in such a way that the operator feels comfortable and it will definitely add to his performance efficiency. So, proper design goes a long way in making the work of the operator easy which I have already have told the driver's work will become much easy if all the controls are designed properly or in other words we can say ergonomically. Now, selection of a control device quickly we can see the following factors affect the selection of a proper control control device. Already you know why control is necessary, what type of control we must exert. So, first are the operational functions of the control, needs of control task, information needs of the operator and space and layout requirement. So, quickly I will read that what are the important factors that need to be taken into account when we are choosing or selecting a proper control device. The aim and importance of control, the features of the controlled machine, the nature of controlling action required and the time of control are some of the important criteria which would determine the operational functions of control. So, time of control, the nature of controlling action required, the features of the controlled machine and the aim and importance of control are very, very important. Force requirement, if it is very difficult to change the lever, you may not enjoy using that lever. Speed and accuracy of movement and the interdependence of all these factors are to be specified under the needs of the control task. Information needs of the operator, the whole range of operators information requirements such as identification, location and position of control, setting etc. are determined in the information needs of the operator that when he has to operate a particular control lever that must be known to the known to the operator that is one of the information needs of the operator space and layout requirement this is again a very important criterion which determines the and decides the physical design of the control. So, basically there are all these three four things functions means what is required out of the control systems need of control task may be force requirement must be less speed and accuracy must be better. Information need the worker must know that if he is going to do this control or if he is going to pull this lever what is going to happen. The whole range of operators information requirements such as identification, location and position of control settings etc. have to be determined. So, finally, the space requirement will also affect the performance of the controlling device. So, this is very very important. I, in the beginning only I told that we are not going to cover the breadth and depth of this topic, but we will try to introduce that such type of information is available which can be relevant referred to when you are designing a display or you are designing a control lever or a control device for a particular machine. Now, these are the different types of controls you will be able to appreciate. This is one switch on off, foot operated, hand operated, on off switch here again shown here. Then this is a setting of a controlling device. So, we can see all these controls fall under following two categories activation and discrete setting controls discrete setting controls, detent controls. When the function of the control is to activate, actuate two setting or up to 24 settings, all of which are discrete in nature, very, very important, discrete in nature. So, here you can see on and off, discrete in nature. Examples of dis discrete setting controls are on off push button knobs, rotary selector switch, joystick selector switch, etc. The system response in this cat ca case is stationary. Continuous and quantitative setting controls, this is continuous. So, we can see the knob, it is continuously you can uh, rotate it, crank, wheel continuously you can change. So, there can be levers also, then pedal continuously you are pressing the pedal. So, in the previous case, if you go back, it is on off type, but here it is continuous control. So, continuous and quantitative setting controls. When the control is required to impart continuous and variable motion, it is known as a continuous and quantitative setting control. System response here is rotary or linear, but not 
stationary they can have a slowing movement or a swing in one direction and a fine adjustment so here the response is not stationary it is a, it is represented by a movement the motion can be linear such as lever or accelerator pedal or rotary such as a steering wheel so this is a steering wheel example is shown here now rules for selection of controls we must know the characteristics of force speed accuracy and control functions should be taken into consideration when selecting the control very very important force speed accuracy control functions control should make use of each body member depending upon the physical capability limitation of each member so we must try to make use of the different members or limbs of our body when we are trying to uh, design the control system the simple example can be when we are driving a motorbike so we have controls in different limbs of our body in one hand we can control the accelerator other hand we can control the brake in the feet we can control uh, we can have a brake there also and we can have a gear shift lever there in the feet so we have to control should be control should make use of each body member depending upon the physical capability physical capability limitation of each member easily identifiable controls should be utilized linear control are used for small range and rotational controls are used for large range so when the linear controls are there we can, we can have a small range only but in the circular or the rotational controls we can have large range of values also now the last part that we want to cover today is the layout of the working space or working environment so quickly i will read through this thing so working environment the role that ergonomics so our topic is ergonomics that we are covering the role that ergonomics plays in the environmental man machine interface essentially consists of three folds so this is identifying the effects that the environment has on man's physiological and psychological process identification ensuring that the work patterns equipment and machine interfaces are designed to minimize the individual variation in performance this is second and the third is ensuring that all the necessary protective systems are designed to take an account of physiological and psychological variation so it is related to the protective systems it is related to the minimizing the individual variations in the performance and the first one is identifying the effects that the environment has on man's physiological and psychological process so if we are able to take into account all these factors the performance and efficiency of the worker is definitely going to increase no one working environment very quickly we can see we we must provide a working environment which takes into account the fatigue or the strain a worker acquires in performing a task so the working environment must mitigate the effect of fatigue or strain that the worker may feel or the worker may encounter during performing his task Prod productivity of the system must increase by the environment that we are providing unbearable noise must be avoided insufficient light leading to poor visibility smoke and fumes and uncleanness also must be taken care of so we must provide sufficient light reduce the noise product try to improve the productivity and fatigue or strain must be minimized to the worker now here we can see this is a worker uh, this is a seating arrangement for a worker this is a working space depicted so we can see the working environment the components affecting workers task may be as follows so what are the components which will affect the workers task the equipment number 1 seating arrangement displays controls materials working space now suppose the environment is such 
that three four people are working in a very small area that is certainly going to affect both the physical as well as the physiological working environment for the worker so basically we have to ensure that the equipment that the person is using his seating arrangement displays controls materials working space must be designed as per the rules and regulations the guidelines which have been established for all these factors then only the worker will be able to deliver the performance which is expected from him now this is an important slide uh, maybe the last but one slide the working environment factors so certain data is required for concluding proper design while considering an ergonomic design of the working space the relevant data are design data on controls and displays which i have already told in the previous slide we have seen controls and displays are an important factor that affect the operator's performance second is we have already taken one session on anthropometric data that is concerning a particular situation so anthropometric data already we have given types of controls and displays also we have seen characteristics of controls also we have seen the following data are relevant of use physical dimensions of the operator in the designed working posture the work space required with respect to the posture involved as well as the motions concerning his or her work so the anthropometric data the design of controls design of displays plays an important role in the overall design of the workplace for the worker moreover uh, another thing that we is that is coming in the picture is the posture also so the he must have sufficient space to move around and he must ensure a good or the design must ensure a good posture for the worker now this is uh, maybe probably the last slide or the second last slide that we are going to cover today working environment factors the following sorry are environmental conditions which affect the human capabilities and endurance range so illumination is very very important we can see different types of illumination techniques are there so the important consideration for workplace illumination are distribution and intensity of light brightness contrast types color and reflectance so even the light plays a very important role now this session is being recorded we have a large array of lighting or illumination sources which are making it good or making it maybe comfortable for all of you to view this session being conducted so if the light is poor you will also not appreciate the quality of the video so that is important then the vibrations are equally important we need to control the vibrations so i may not go into the details but we need the vibrations may be minimized by we need to minimize these vibrations by dynamic balancing of machines isolation of vibration producing equipment and machines such as press hammers away from the general working area so whatever uh, whatever equipment produces lot of vibration we must isolate it into a different shop by use of vibration absorbers and impact dampers etc by designing machine foundations using accepted criteria for vibration elimination instead of using thumb rules so we must follow the accepted criteria for designing the foundations of the machines which we know are going to create a lot of vibrations so therefore vibrations is imp uh, is an important parameter prior to that illumination is an important parameter and last one the ventilation is also very very important parameter so the most common methods of ventilation are windows and ventilators because they provide natural ventilation and and exhaust fans extract stale air and creates low pressure area to be filled by the fresh air so the ventilation that we are providing for the workers on the shop floor is also equally important and the last are the thermal conditions that are related to temperature humidity and air flow so this i will read for you poor heat and humid condition produce discomfort in the workers which affect their efficiency concentration and their members of the body humidity and heat are related to each other both affect comfort and tolerance of the body to heat the effect of heat can be minimized by shielding installation and provision for adequate local ventilation so in installation and provision for adequate local ventilation so we can see 
that there are three things one is the display another one is the control and the th last one that we have covered is the environmental system that we are providing for the worker who is working on the shop floor. So, we need to take care of the ventilation requirements, we need to take care of the temperature and humidity control requirements, we need to take care of the illumination. So, on illumination only we can have two or three lectures depending upon the research which has been conducted by the various researchers that what type of light is suitable if you are doing a very very minute task for example, the assembly of the gears of the mechanical type of watches. So, what type of illumination is required there? So, depending upon the type of work the illumination levels will also change the ventilation levels will also change. So, the important point to address with this session is that there are lot of parameters that have to be taken into account when we are designing the work system for any organization. So, with this we conclude the today's session as well as the discussion for week number 11. In next week, we will try to see the applications of the theory that we have covered over the last 11 weeks in form of examples, case studies where we will see that how this, th these theoretical aspects have been applied or put into practice. Thank you.